am. I'm a survivor. I'm Jeff Varner from Survivor's Australian Outback in Cambodia. You know, when Abby's acting up, Gandhi is storming off, or Deb is looking for rocks somewhere, you are exactly where you need to be. Oh my God, this is delicious. Who needs food when you've got Dwayne and David? This is Survivor Talk with D&D. So if you feel me, put your hands in. Everybody, I am uh, Dwayne Stroud. This is Survivor Talk with D and D, and I'm here with my best friend David. This is David. Yes, on the air. Yes, it is. Very good, David. You are David. I, I, I don't know what what intro you're going to do every every time we go on. Now. I know you're doing well, something different up. every time we come on. Well, I messed up. You don't tell them that you messed up. You just say, "Yeah, that's what I meant to do." All right. Tonight like- we are reading, listening, and discussing your thoughts on the new cast and season of uh, Survivor Co-Wrong. And this is our That's What You Think episode. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we're going to do that. Uh, it is also our 250th episode, David. Congratulations, our Dwayne. 250th episode. That's a long time of, to do something with anybody. Of Survivor Talk with D&D. Um, we started, our first episode was January 20th, 2012. And there will be a couple times during the show, I'm going to play a little clip from our first ever show. And uh, this was our original opening of our first ever podcast right here. The following podcast was recorded live in front of no one. This is Survivor Talk with d and I'm Dwayne. I'm David. We're just two buds talking about a show we love, Survivor. So David, why don't you tell them what we're going to be doing tonight? Tonight we're going to be introducing you to the 18 contestants that are showing up this this season on Survivor, and once again we return to the islands of Samoa. That's right. <laughs> and then you went on to tell us all the history of Samoa. It was awesome. Oh, it was terrible. <laughs> I was wow. like, I was like, this we, is we need a, talk we needed a Red D&D. Bull or something. <laughs> I'm Dwayne. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dwayne, and we're here to introduce to you the 18 contestants. <laughs> and, and if you're still awake at the end, we might talk about something else. That's right. Wow. So that was uh, episode number 200. That was uh, 250 episodes ago, David. Wow. How's that for crazy? That's a long time. Crazy. Uh, we have some upcoming shows. Next week is our D&D Survivor Challenge Draft episode next thursday night we'll have david kelly uh david kelly wentworth and colton cumby will be competing well we'll be drafting against me and dan foley and we will draft our teams and talk about each player as we draft if you're wanting to know the the uh, point system for the draft for the D survivor draft challenge draft uh, just go to our website and there's a logo right in the middle just scroll down a little bit and you'll see it and that's how we score uh grab a friend and uh, draft with each other and play on your own or join our Facebook group and submit a team without even having to draft. Just pick your nine best players who you think are going to do the best and um, submit them and uh, play on the team. I, I don't know how – David, do you – you're not here right now, so you may not be able to answer this, but do you know how many players we have already signed up in the fantasy not not the fantasy the D and D Survivor Challenge on our Facebook cr- page group. Nope, that was easier to think than it was to say. You don't know? <laughs> well, Andy no. Westover does that. Shana, uh, of course, uh, who's one of our bloggers, keeps tally of the score all season long. So thank you for that. Uh, then the next week, Thursday, February eighteenth, Jeff Varner joins us for our recap and discussion of the premiere episode. And in case you think anything fishy is going on, we asked him about a month ago. So he's been on the docket for a while. And, uh, hey, David, just (laughs) thought I'd let him know. (laughs) We're not trying to copy anybody. So, uh, anyway, Sunday, April 3rd, that's two months away. What in the world? Well, that is Kelly and Friends, a patron podcast. It's going to be a call-in show for all of our D&D patrons as of April 1st, so... If you're uh, if you're a D and D patron by the end of March, then you can participate in this conference call with Kelly Wentworth, and she's going to have two or three of her survivor friends 
We'll announce those as it gets closer. So uh, it's a thank you to uh, all of our patrons, both longtime patrons and those of you who decide to join between now and then. Thank you so much. David, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Durham Warrior Survival Challenge? People, are you ready? Because that's the tab you need to click on when you go to www.durhamwarriorschallenge.com. Have you ever thought that you could play Survivor, but like me, have 0% chance of getting on the show? This is your weekend to go prove that you could play Survivor. It's June 23rd through June 26th. It's in Durham, Maine, one of the most beautiful wooded areas that belongs to Bob Crowley that you could oh, ever visit. Nice. And um, it's awesome. I can't talk enough about it. If you go to our webpage, you'll see all the uh, podcasts we did where we talked about it. We talked to John and Andy about behind the scenes. We talked to players that played along with me, including the winner. We talked to survivors that played along. It's an amazing four days. It is a crash course of Survivor. It's the whole game in four days. We play, When I played, it was 24 people, and we got down to one winner over four days. It's amazing, and it's great. It supports the Wounded Warrior Project, and it's just an amazing thing. Go to www.durhamwarriorschallenge.com, and you'll see everything. And when you click on the tab that says DWSC 2016 dot, 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 are you ready? The page, the picture on that page is just epic. That's, that's just does it have you odd. in it? It does have me in it. It has me and the people that voted me out as soon as we went to tribal council. Yeah. That's why it's epic. (laughs) That's right. Yes. So if you want to play Survivor, get your application in now. I think it runs out at the end of of February. They stop taking them and they start casting. Well, hey, and and you know we had Troy Zan on and you had Jill on. We've also had Nina on since. All three played in 2015. And all three said it was as challenging, if not more, than the mm-hmm. actual game as well as that, joel joel was on our first podcast uh joel from season one with yes. uh, wendy arvin the the woman that won yes so uh durham warriors survival challenge if you want to know more about it you can also listen to our durham warrior podcast the, there's a tab it's one of the menu items on the top of our webpage. she's she's gonna get get me for calling her a woman she's my age the girl that won i'll say it that way well you're a man so <laughs> i know her i'm a guy she's a girl anyway yeah Awesome, uh, awesome, great fun. I'd like to do something about my lighting. Well, that's not a lighting issue. It's something else. <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> old age issue. <laughs> by the way, my goal is to be under 230 pounds by the patron podcast. Cool. So uh, I'm at 242 right now, so I should be able to. I've lost 16 pounds. You rock. On Weight Watchers. Anyway, uh, if you're watching and chatting together live on stwdd.com slash live, thank you. Enjoy yourselves. Have a lot of fun. And uh, if you're not, you're listening to this later, join us live sometime. It's a lot of fun. All right, David, are you ready to get started with the feedback? Are you? Are you, uh, are you ready? I'm ready. Are you? All right, let's do it then. So was that let's the got started it. clip? No, that's the let's do this clip. You got oh, me worried. I was worried about that. Oh, that's... I forgot. Yeah, I was. Wor- I thought you were going to dump forgot. something on me. I don't know. What it okay. Was. Uh, before we get to our feedback, we we only have three feedbacks, so David and I are going to have a little leeway tonight. Yeah. You get a little early D and D tonight. So uh, this was about eight minutes into our first podcast, and David decides to tell us a little story. So here's about a 30, 45 second clip. My favorite moment of ever watching Survivor was after Hurricane Isabel, yeah. and you guys were without power. You came over, and we watched the first episode of the new season of Survivor, and it was the episode where Rupert was in the season, oh, yeah. and he came up and found the group that had dropped their shoes, yeah. and he sold the other tribe's shoes to get money to take yeah. with his tribe to Survivor. And that was a year that Sandra won, the first yep. time she won. That's right. I do remember that. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Now, that's whenever – uh, those of you who are listening, all four of you. <laughs> four? David, I think there's going to be four. <laughs> well, at least I have a couple friends who might be listening. We uh, we met in Virginia, so that's where David still lives, and I live in Alabama. So, but anyway, yeah, that, I don't that, think that, 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 I, I don't think there's any part of Virginia <laughs> left because I think I breathed it all in. <laughs> as, as I, as I paid no mil- episodes, man. With, what what was the first mic? Was it the ear headpiece with the mic that came yeah, right to my nose? It was a little plantronic, yes. little plantronic headphone. 
and it picked, I mean, and like, it was like right here and you'd be like, every time you would speak, you would exhale and I'd spend hours editing it out. <laughs> I remember that. And, and fi- but, you know, but, but then you started taking asthma medicine or something and you, and you stopped it. I no, know. I got this shield screen on the front of the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> no, you actually corrected it. It, it, it was actually um, something that you fixed on your own. It it really wasn't a a mic thing. It was just you figuring out not to breathe out after you speak or whatever. <laughs> oh, my so. breath for long periods of time. <laughs> yes. David doesn't breathe the entire podcast. That's why I'm holding my hand up to speak so I can breathe. <laughs> David, every time David breathes, he hits the mute button. <laughs> every time David breathes, you lose to Wayne. <laughs> I did that for a while. I would hit the mute button every now and then when I could talk. There is at at the. I I actually have been very kind to you, David, because at the end of the last clip that I'm going to play tonight, it was like a five second. And I just, I just decided to take it out. What did I? Okay, thank you, thank you for taking it out. I said, what did I do this week? (laughs) <laughs> all right let's get to it first we have david he's gonna read lazarus metcalf so uh david take it away great closer look show dnd i really enjoyed it the blogger guests were good colton was especially entertaining for his short stint on the show i agree colton's always entertaining uh yes he is so lazarus starts by ranking the tribes At number three he, he puts beauty Number two, he puts brains, and the number one tribe, obviously, he thinks is going to be this season is the Braun tribe. Yeah, well, I guess we all agree with him on that. Uh, let's see. As we've seen with Kageon and Worlds Apart, the Collar tribes are pretty much the same thing. Braun tends to do well. This cast does not appear to be any different. Overall, I like the personalities, and the tribe make up more. Looking at this beauty cast, I am re- now you got me thinking about breathing. So you should have never played that clip. You don't do it anymore, David, so don't worry about it. All right. Looking at this beauty... Only oh. occasionally. Yes. Uh, looking at this beauty cast, I, now people are going to listen, though. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's breathing. It. He's breathing. Can you hear him? That's David breathing. <laughs> we get away from the mic. <laughs> Sorry, last. It's like, it's like, he's the one that prank called me. I know it. <laughs> All right. Oh, See, each gosh. feedback is going to take 35 minutes. That's why we're going to well, spread it out. if you're being really careful with your breathing, then yes. All right. Looking at this <laughs> beauty cast, I am really worried about their long-term chances. For someone to be successful out of this tribe, they will have to adapt well. Medivax, even... <laughs> I'm sorry. I just... I was watching you, and you were like... <gasps> <laughs> sorry, you take it ahead. away. Hey, you got to answer the last, not me. Okay, Medivax. Right. Even though I like Braun, Scott and Sydney stand out as medical risks due to their muscle size. Add Caleb to this from Beauty and Joe from Brains for his age. Add to that from the preview where Kyle Jason is concerned about his shoulders. I think these five are among the pull of those most likely to be pulled. Has uh, Nothing's been confirmed that there's a Medivac this season, right? Just that it's a horrible season uh, no, I, for the season. No, I think some of the previews actually... Oh, show make it very medical. clear that there are several medevacs, at least two. Okay, I mean we do know it's a it's a grinding season on these people, whether it's conditions right. or whatever. But yeah, well, and I mean even to the point that they're making that CBS is making that the theme of one of their previews. Yeah, we, we were talking about that earlier. What did you? What do you? How does that? I don't know. Does that worry you? It doesn't worry me. I. I honestly think what they're doing is they're trying to get people that don't normally watch. Yeah. It's like, you know, oh, there's a wreck on the side of the road, so I'm going to stop and look at it. So I think it's the whole rubberneck thing. They're they're hoping to gain some viewers because they want to see people get, you know. This is like hurt. the like the stunt shows where they show you the the death possibility of the stunt to get you to watch and they don't show you necessarily how the motorcycle was made or how the jump was built. They just show you that That's somebody right. might die. Okay. Right. So somebody might die this season on Survivor. That's what we're just letting you know. So, no, huh. that's no. not what we're saying at all. <laughs> okay. He goes on to give one favorite from each tribe. 
from the beauty tribe. He likes Julia just because Alex doesn't. No, I'm just kidding. I added that, that part in there. Uh, he likes Julia. Yes, she is young and it is a risk. One blogger was very against her. He did say that. <laughs> Read the bio. Her brother has been a health risk his whole life. She has traveled to foreign countries to teach English, etc. If there is a young contestant who proves to be a young exception and be wiser, I can see this from her. I like Ty, but I'm worried if he'll be on the outs. Yeah, I'm sorry, Lazarus. I just can't agree with you. David agrees with you, I think, but I don't. I, I do. I like Julia. I, I'd yeah. like to see. You never know. You know, the one old person or the one young person, you never know what season they're going to step out. On the brains, he likes Joseph, an older contestant who appears physically stacked. Age slash culture differences can have something to do with older people being voted off, but the physical older people usually do well and are not picked off. I think his job experience is huge, which I agree. If he is not a medevac, I see him making the merge at least. David, he is smiling in his cast photo at least. Yeah, but he looks like he's in pain. <laughs> <laughs> not, not in pain. I don't mean in pain. Just that, okay, here's your smile. Take the picture. Now I'm going back to intense Joe. All right. From the brawn, he likes Jennifer Lanzetti. Her personality jumped off the page at me before I had even watched the videos. She has been through a lot and will be prepared for the mental shifts in the game. She is built, but not overly like so like Sydney. I do not know what it is, but I am especially excited for this season. It is hard to pinpoint, but looking back re retrospectively, I like this cast a lot compared to all the other first time contestant seasons. I think we may be in for a real treat for a treat. I just hope that the medical evacs don't alter the game so much post merge that it is traumatic to the game outcome. You know, you you might remember yeah, I do too. we were getting ready for the first podcast. <laughs> I was slow to come around. It's like I knew it's like once you go to the first who the heck are these people podcast, it's like you're opening the can on the peanuts and you might as well eat them all or they're gonna go stale. So or it's like in my case, the cashews. Okay. But but like Laz I think it was this week. You might have, you probably noticed the difference in my messaging that I was, I couldn't wait for tonight. Yeah. You know, we've been testing yeah. your equipment and stuff, but still I'm like, I'm ready. <laughs> Let's talk. I'm ready for the season to start. The, yeah. the more so, these people, if you don't follow them on Twitter, follow them on Twitter and Facebook because they, they're posting pictures from the CBS commercials and they're really oh, yeah. high definition pictures. They're really good. And um, it's just, I don't know. It's working on me. I can't wait for the season to start. Yeah. I think it's going to be a great season. And the thing about the evacs, if there are several of them, that will that has potential to totally change the game. Exactly. You know, because you may go in the next week thinking, okay, this person obviously has it, but then someone in their alliance gets medevaced, and now they're at the bottom or whatever. So, I mean, and I know that Colton's <laughs> first season, there was controversy over whether he, whether he was medevaced or he quit. And but still, if he had gone back into the merge with a few people, because um, he was kind of leading that group that he was with, he could have split up the people that were there, and it could have been a different game. I think Kim Spradlin still would have found a way to get to the end. But you never know, you know, what a medevac can do to a season, what it can change. Right. Speaking of Colton, here's what we thought of Colton two hundred and fifty episodes ago. Figure. All right. So who's next? Colton Cumbie. Trying to find him here real quick. He's a 21-year-old college student from Monroeville, Alabama. Oh, yeah. How far is, I won't say how far that is from you, but I don't, it's in your state. I have no idea where that is. <laughs> he's he's the big Survivor fan. Is what I Well, I wrote, I think he may be a big Survivor fan. I don't, well, know, why, I don't know why I thought that. Because he said when he turned 10, he had a birthday party. And he only invited 15 kids so they could have a 16-person Survivor game, which That's he, of right. course, won because he was the birthday boy. Right. I, re I remember that now. So let's see what else did I put about him. He's pe he said he was a people person, that he's outgoing. And I wrote that he talks very fast. <laughs> I wrote, did, did he take a breath during the video? <laughs> <laughs> a minute and 45 seconds of no breathing. <laughs> he, did, he, he did sound – he does talk a lot, obviously, but he did sound – pretty smart about the game and there was my laugh the <laughs> laugh that we have been ridiculed for a couple of times i think yes. that, i think we had a review once that was like <clears throat> i'm in for a good time and all but one of those guys just overlaps way too much and they were talking yeah about that me. was about 246 episodes ago 
Yeah. It seemed I like so. 94 <laughs> years ago. I think I had a drooling problem. That sounds more like a, a mouth issue than it is a <laughs> nose issue. I don't know. But but if we get the iTunes reviews now that go, David needs to fix his breathing, I'm going to be like, oh, crud. That was 250 episodes ago. I, it almost sounds like I'm on some sort of illegal medication. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm just taking something in. Wow. All right. Next, we have Emily from Finland, <clears throat> and she says, Hi, I'm Emily from Finland, and I started listening around San Juan del Sur, but this is my first feedback. In my opinion, I like it more when you do the recap episodes and feedback episodes apart so people have more time to do their feedback. But whatever. I'm going to give my opinions about the cast. Well, we like that, too. To be honest with you, that would be our preference, but it it doubles the amount of time that we're podcasting during the week, which takes that much more time away from our families. So we kind of decided to do this. So sorry. <laughs> Brains. Peter, I'm getting Garrett vibes from him and I like him, but I feel that when he hits merge or tribe swap, he will be gone. I got to look up and see who Peter is. Oh, Peter's yeah, the Peter. ER doc. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, can yeah. you look at all the pictures and name everybody without looking at names? Obviously. No. Really? Not yet. Not yet. Oh, then, I, then I'm definitely excited about this season because I can look at the picture and name everybody on the oh, picture. Oh, <laughs> nice. All right, next we have Aubrey getting getting huge Shireen vibes from her and this new Brains tribe. Doesn't want to be the new Luzon, so they vote out the weak one. All right. Hmm. Debbie. Uh, Debbie's Tiger Woman, right? Yes. Yeah, the chemist. Tiger woman or Lion Woman. I never can tell the difference. Anyway. I don't like her because I'm getting Carolyn vibes, and I didn't like her either. <laughs> but I still predict her at least placing in the final seven. Wow. That's specific. Final seven. And then Joe, or Joseph. He's okay, I guess. All I know is that he was an ex-FBI agent, and he followed me on Twitter. Really? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> really? Emily? Why did he follow you on Twitter? Was Some... he still working, or was it since yes. he's been retired? <laughs> Is is uh, Jason going to be coming after you soon, or is that what's... <laughs> anyway? Uh, early merge boot. Wow, there you go. That's all he gets and from then, following on Twitter. Is he's yeah. an early merge boot. <laughs> Neil, I really like him, but I feel that he might get evacuated because in his CBS ads he said, "quote I will never quit, and I can put up with pain more than most people." Unquote. I really hope that he won't get evacuated, but I'll say fifteenth out. Fifteenth out. That's third place. That's, that's that's funny. I thought the same thing when um, we were doing the who the heck are these people about Peter and Neil. Both he, Peter's the doc and Neil's the guy that said he he won't quit. That that they would be the ones who made the act. Fifteenth. Oh, <laughs> so she you don't think she means fifteenth place? She, you think she means third out? Fifteenth. Oh, well, that's pretty far. Well, okay. Well, now that might be what she meant, but she wrote fifteenth out, so that's what I thought. But she may mean fifteenth place. I don't know. And then lastly, Liz, or Elizabeth, love her, but she probably will get booted from being too smart, late merge. Hmm. All right. I, now, I like specific predictions. Well done, Emily. I, I like specifics. Yeah. And she's not done. Let's do the beauty tribe. Caleb, don't care much for him. Beast mode, cowboy. And I agree with Alex about keeping him as a shield, early merge. Nick, he is either really confident or... Or just a dishback? Oh, she wrote something else. Yes, and, and I, I edited it. Yes. I okay. actually like dishback. <laughs> I think that was pretty – it just popped in my head. <laughs> <laughs> but I think both. So she thinks he's both confident and that. With that, I said – with that said, I see him going either very far or very early. But I can see that he will get a Drew Christie boot episode. That's funny. I see him going first or last, or maybe somewhere yeah. in the middle. But no, she didn't say somewhere in the middle. I know. I know. <laughs> so Sorry, it's either it early or 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 in the end. So I we we did have some people on on Twitter go, "Oh come on, y'all! Nick is just an act. It's all an act." Yeah, but, I, yeah, I, but I, we I saw wrote, it right away. So will they see it and get rid we'll of him for it? Well, so I didn't think it was an act. You do, and Alex does. I don't think it's an act. Oh, I think it. No, no, I think it's he's he's going to act like he's a certain way, but they're not going to buy it. And but his the way he acts is because of who he is. I think. Right. Okay, Julia. I really like her and hope that she can get over the age factor. Middle merge. 
Ty. Yao Man 2.0. He is okay and will make it far, but won't win. Fifth or fourth place. Anna, I really like her, but why is she on the beauty but why why is she on the beauty tribe? <laughs> I mean, she's a poker player. It's really good for her to be in the beauty tribe because people will under, underestimate her. She will finish at final five to seven. Michelle, didn't think much of her. Could go either way, but frankly, I don't care. <laughs> <clears throat> and then Braun, her favorite tribe, Kyle Jason. My favorite is a bad arse and gonna and gotta love the beard. I hope he wins, but I think he will finish early merge. Wow, early merge. Darnell, I think Darnell will win this game. Oh, there you go. That's your pick. He is a, he is social enough and not too big of a strategy threat or physical threat. He might not be the obvious one, but I think with his personality and with a great social game. Okay. Alicia. There she is. She is really meh, and I kind of like her, but I feel that she might. Th- that seems contradictory to me. She's really meh, and I kind I, of like her. I, I kind of read it like she's really meh, and I kind of like her. You know, as in like I like her, but she's oh, still okay. kind of meh. Okay, she's really meh, and I kind of like her, but f- but I feel that she might be the first boot from the Braun tribe. First boot. Well, I could see that. Yeah. All right, um, Scott, he is boring and will be either early merge or pre-merge boot. And his Dwayne did not stutter in his feed. That was actually, she wrote it that long. <laughs> yes, she did. And then Jennifer, I think she'll be another medevac and will go early. Okay. Sydney, people seem to like her, but I don't. I think she will be getting booted after tribe swap or merge. All right. Great feedback. First feedback from Finland. I don't know how they talk in Finland, but it's probably not like this. No, it's not English or British. No. <laughs> Unless they're on vacation. How would you talk in Finland? Fin- oh, I, I don't know. I don't know what their accents are. We need her to call in next time. Yes. Pay, pay Emily, call in next time. $425 or whatever no, money they- she can No, she can use speak pipe. Oh. And just go to our feedback page, and there's a link. That's true. 90 seconds. 90 seconds of talking. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking six seasons ago that people actually call in and, and get charged. Well, we do have a call-in number. We still have I it. I don't remember what it is, but we do have it. Yeah, it's listed on the top of our website. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Guess who keeps up with all the technical issues, all the technical side of our podcast. I would Me. say the same Guess guy that shows did it up. six seasons ago. Yeah. <laughs> Guess who shows up and shows his beautiful face and talks? David. <laughs> That's moi. All right, David. Read uh, Brian from Maryland. Hey, Dwayne and Dave. I've listened to some preview podcasts and checked out some of the videos, and I have a cast assessment and predictions. This season, I'm dividing the cast into players and pawns. The players will probably have some sense of what they're doing and will drive the strategy of the season. The pawns will mostly be along for the ride, but a couple have potential to figure out the game as they go. What about the pawns that never figure out the game and still make it to the end? Ah. But we won't be talking about any top tech drivers or anything like that. So I think the pawns of season 32 are Joe, Peter. These are the pawns. Joe, Peter, Alicia, Sydney. Darnell, Scott, Caleb, Julia, and Ty. Scott, Caleb, Julia, and Ty. Oh, okay. All right. The players uh, he feels are Aubrey, Debbie, Elizabeth, or Liz, Neil, Jennifer, Kyle, Anna, Michelle, and Nick. Okay. All right. Do you think I have them in the right category? Let's do, look at that real quick. Do you have that in front oh, of you? Oh, boy. Yeah. Yes, I know. I Without looking at pictures. No, I have to look at pictures. <laughs> uh, Joe as a pawn, uh, I think he could pass himself off as a pawn, even though he may know more of what's going on. Uh, Joe, the FBI agent. Yeah, well, okay, I don't think he'd be a pawn because I don't think people – okay, a pawn in that they may get rid of him early, like okay. use, like sacrifice him, but not a pawn as in take him to the end. Right. Peter, so the pawn is yeah. in they sacrifice okay. him. Okay, Peter, the ER doc, um, mm-hmm. I hate to say it, but yeah. I think he could be a pawn. I just don't get a sense of play. Alicia, um, 
Yeah, I could, I'd agree. I could agree with that more so than a player. I mean, we're, we're guessing at things we've, we haven't even seen the first day. Uh, yeah. Sydney, possibly. I liked Emily's. <laughs> it's all they're all I mean, possible. They're pods, all possible, yeah. And they're all possible players. I don't have any idea. Plus, I don't want to give too much away because we got a draft next week. That's true. That's true. All right, we won't get too much of Yes, no. Brian. As far as you're concerned, you have them in the right categories. Yes, okay. I agree completely with your assessment, Brian. Yes, I'd like to offer some advice for people trying to pick a winner. All right, so listen up, folks. If you haven't got okay. your fantasy pool picks yet, here's your advice for picking a winner. <laughs> Usually I can eliminate certain contestants as a winner pick based on historical performance of certain attributes. Here are just three examples. So Brian's not giving you the whole formula. He's only giving you three steps of the formula. All right. Number one, the oldest person on the season has never won. For season 30, this oldest person is Joe. Sorry. Okay. That's okay, David. Um, and that's true. I looked it up, and when Bob Crowley won, he was actually only 57. Jillian Larson was um, 61 that season. Um, the biggest man in the cast photo has never won. Sorry, Scott. Okay. Um, the oldest woman has never won. Uh, this would be Debbie. Um, and far as I know, that's true. If I'm wrong on the stats, somebody correct me in the Facebook group. I'm sure they will. They will. But yes. they'll do it kindly because our Facebook group is awesome. Yes, it is. Uh, but I think he's right on all three stats. Uh, now yeah. for my winner pick. All right, so this is Brian's winner pick. I'm guessing a woman wins this time, and the three on my radar are Liz, who is on the Brain Stripe. That's Elizabeth Markham, right? Okay. Michelle, who is on the – she's the bartender. Beauty Tribe. Michelle Beauty Tribe. Fitzgerald. And Anna, who is on the Beauty Tribe, because we were just told by Emily that she's on the Beauty Tribe, um, yeah. the poker player. It's a close call, but I'm choosing Michelle, the bartender, who's also traveled quite a bit, which means she will probably crash and burn. Sorry, Michelle. If you lose, it's Brian's fault, not ours. Um, enjoy, the, <laughs> enjoy the season, everybody. Brian in Maryland. In in where, David? Maryland. It sounded like you said Maryland. Oh. In Maryland. In Maryland. In Maryland. Maryland. That's so weird. All right. Oh, sorry, I was distracted. Thank you, Brian. That was awesome. Okay, we're going to give you another clip from our first episode. This is our very last clip. And I thought, wouldn't it be funny to hear what we thought about the winner of that season? So here is uh -oh. what we thought about Kim... Uh, in our very first episode, 250 episodes ago, as our viewers rapidly leave. <laughs> uh, last, uh, the second to last one is Kim Spradlin, but now on some of the clips, they put Kimberly underneath her name. So, I mean, underneath, so I'm not sure if it's going to be Kimberly or Kim, but she's 29, bridal shop owner from San Antonio, Texas. I, I wrote, well, first of all, I like the fact that she's a business owner. She's been an outdoor adventure guide, so she's going to be good with people. Because I've been on those water rafting tours, and those <laughs> water rafter tour guides are fun to be around. Yeah, that's she the, also mentioned, like the other people, she's not going to tell anyone that she's been an outdoor adventure guide. Right, right. And I love what she wrote. I love she. She's my second favorite person, by the way. So Chelsea's my first, and Kimberly's my second. She wrote. She said, "I'm going to figure it out as I go." So, and that's exactly what Sophie did whenever, you know, one last season. It's exactly what she did. She said, I didn't go in with some specific strategy. I just figured it out based on who I was with and who I was around. And that's what Kimberly said. And I think that's a really good way to t attack it. It's funny because I wrote in all caps, no strategy. <laughs> yeah. She's got no strategy going into this game. You come, you got it. You talk to people that make it to the finals, and they say, "I had a alliance the first day I got there." And I mean, she might pick up on that right away, but that just—I don't know. I hope she doesn't call too many people animal names because well, yeah, no, that's, that's what she, that's, she yeah. likes to do. But that'll get her kicked off pretty quick, right? So you and I have a different opinion on this. Then, do you think I, I liked her? What's up, guys? It's Will from Wonderlink again, aka the Giant Ninja. 
Well, shopping season is upon us again, and if you'd like to support the podcast while you're doing your online shopping at absolutely no cost to you, just visit www.stwdd.com slash Amazon, or go to D&D's website and follow the links. Now, back to the show. Later, peeps. So, our first season, you Mm -hmm. had a much better feeling about Kim. And me being the idiot that I was, the fact that she had no strategy, I was kind of joking her about that, was what was right about her strategy, is that she right. wasn't going in with a defined strategy. She was going in with an, like an open book, like a, flexible. A, a book yeah. with no words in it, you know, that she could write her own strategy as she went. Yep. So, yep. awesome. Yep. And it's, uh, it's so- funny, it's funny that I, I was so worried about our, um, us giving away our, our locations in that previous clip that yes. I said, well, you don't have to tell how far you are away from yes. where Colton is. I don't Nobody want to give want away. Anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Now that everybody knows where we live, <laughs> you know, pretty much. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, well, that was fun. Those were fun days. I, I wonder how many people um, listening right now listen to that first podcast. Have you listened to all 250? There's actually 260 on the on iTunes, but some of those are are shooting the breeze episodes, so we don't count those. So uh, anyway, so next week, man, we're gonna have some fun we, next week. Yeah, we do. Before we do that, Mir's got her um, Miriam's got her feedback in our chat room real quick. It's just a few lines. She forgot to call in. Um, she goes. Then she goes. She goes by Vader girl too, doesn't she? Yeah, she goes yeah. by Vader girl. Uh, Mira, I am. She says, I forgot to call in. I can message. Anyway, final three. She picks uh, Neil, the ice cream man, mm-hmm. Anna, I like Neil. the poker player, and Darnell, the postal worker. Um, she thinks Peter, the ER doc, goes deep and is out final jury. So I guess fourth place. Yeah, that is my final four. What? Yep. Come on, Miriam. Peter? Uh, first, yeah, Peter, final four. First out, first boot is Nick. The fake. I mean, the, the, the life coach. Yeah. Uh, she thinks Anna is going to win. Anna, the poker player. Uh huh. That's her pick. So it's never too late to get your thoughts in. To D&D. <laughs> she wrote, yep. Oh, Peter. Peter, 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 Peter. Peter, Peter, pumpkin eater. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, if you haven't seen it, we do have movie talk with D&D, Star Wars, Super 8, lots of great movies that we've talked about. Um, David, I got to tell you, man, I am, uh, if you have not seen Revenant and I know it's rated R, but I'm going to tell you it's, it's rated R because of, uh, like violence and stuff. <clears throat> so if you have not seen Revenant, well, have you seen it? Yes. Well, since you've seen it, we know something about Michelle Fitz- Fitzgerald that we're not going to tell everybody. Okay. Come on. Her last name, Fitzgerald. You get mm-hmm. it? All right. Anyway. So anyway, well, it's, it's, but that. it's not rated R for Quentin Tarantino violence. It's the no. violence of life back in those times, Indians oh, yeah. and yeah. settlers and, you know, all that. Kind of, that's the violence that's involved. And it's pretty, it's pretty Dude, that real. is the absolute best bear scene I've ever, ever seen. Yeah. That was something that was else. Incredible. That was incredible. It's like a medevac. It changed the whole focus of the movie. Yes, you know, it, it did. It, it and, changed the pat the course of the movie. Yeah, and what's crazy is I went to see the movie knowing nothing about it. Really? So I I didn't know there was a bear attack, and I'm like, dude, he's getting attacked by a bear. He's like the main character. How in the world is he going to get out? Of this? I mean, and it's not like he fights the bear. He just kind of lays there and let it happen. And I've seen know? enough movies with you, knowing that now I can hear you in the movie theater going, "Oh my gosh." Oh, oh my was, gosh. I was very calm. Were you really calm? <laughs> yes. All right. Miriam says, uh, <clears throat> just from what I have seen on Twitter. See, I don't guess I follow Peter on Twitter yet. Uh, Peter is real active. He was born. Yes, he was born. How about mm-hmm. that? My son was born also. Yeah, that's cool. In Okinawa. Hey, I lived in Okinawa till I was three years old. Hmm. Uh, he is Swiss pot doctor. I don't know what that means. He seems, but he seems very enthusiastic. I think Peter goes deep. Darnell is also very confident. So is Neil, who is challenging Trump. What? Oh, well. You guys need to watch the 100. You will love it. Great for podcasting. It's like Lost. Okay, since she brought that up. Oh, the 100 is a show. Yeah, it's on Netflix. 
Okay. I, I ran out of my stuff to watch. Stuff to watch. I don't know where that came from. And <laughs> one, one day at lunch. And when I when I go to work now, because of the um, with the work that I do and stuff, when we go to lunch, don't call me. Don't do anything. Dwayne's the only person that can message me or, or on Facebook. But when I'm at lunch, don't bother me. So I pull out my phone and I hook up, get on Netflix and I see what's on there to watch for 30 minutes. And she had just posted, I think, in our movie talk Facebook group about the 100. Yeah. And I said, all right, let me just go in there and see what it is. And it's it's about the the Earth after a, I want to say it's a nuclear attack or something. And the whole Earth has been exposed. And the survivors go up in a space colony, kind of like a space shuttle. Not a shuttle, but it's a, it's a colony. It's like a giant orbiting satellite type thing. And they live up there for a long, long, long time. And okay. that's all I'll tell you about the plot. Because it in the first 10 minutes, you'll see the plot of the show. Um, all right. So... But the problem I have, and I was just talking to Gracie about this, the problem I have with this show is that it is a typical American TV show. And oh, that no. what they did at casting was everybody that society thinks would be beautiful, step to this side. Everyone that society thinks is not as beautiful, step to this side. <clears throat> so the first group that society thinks is beautiful, you're going to read for all the lead parts, whether you can act or not. Oh, see, I don't like that. The people that are not are going to read for the other parts this is why british television is so good they don't care yes. what you look like they care that you can act we know you're missing half your teeth and the other half are all yellow and black but we still want you because you're funny and you're, yes so now the premise of one of the 100 i liked so i am going to go back and finish i only got 30 minutes in but i'm going to go back and finish the episode and maybe continue watching it but okay. I, I have to say that i was a little disappointed in that i felt like i was watching a modeling class for all the main characters and then the rest were just in the background that, okay, that so kind of bothered will... me and they weren't perfect acting but it but i like the premise of the show so i'm gonna i'm gonna watch it a little bit more okay so Mir miriam says we have to get past the first three episodes okay all right so i'm gonna try that because right now i'm watching the show doc martin and yes. uh but i'm watching that with connie so i can't like come home and watch it so right. i've been coming home for lunch and watching hoarders and stuff and i'm really missing a good show so i'm gonna go back so i'm gonna try to find 100 and watch it yeah, we, although um, although you better call Saul has gotten on Netflix, and first, I haven't ever seen that. Oh my gosh, that show is amazing! It is it is almost as good as Breaking Bad, but totally different. Even though it's the prequel to Breaking Bad, it oh! is amazing. Guess what? 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 We have this guy that uh, goes to our church. Mm -hmm. All right, he sits on the front row. Great guy. He's an actor. He's a professional actor mm -hmm. in Hollywood. Even though we live in Alabama. Yes, but. He was on an episode of The Walking Dead. <gasps> was he in now, so much makeup you couldn't tell? I don't watch The Walking Dead because it bored the heck out of me. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Dwayne is the last person that does not watch The Walking Dead. <laughs> <laughs> I tried it for over a season, and it's like, oh. So anyway. Um, really? Yeah. It, it bored you? Oh. Wow. Anyway, so apparently he was like a doctor or something and he was laying on the bed dying and someone crushed his face with something that's that was his role hmm. he was one of the extras that got killed what if that was an early scene i don't know because it starts in a hospital but that's the walking dead is like lost with an obvious villain no. the villain is the zombies <laughs> Because people are trying to survive. Well, I, I'll be honest. It took the comic book. It took the graphic novel to get me to watch it. But once I did, yes. now I'm all caught up. All so, right. But this, Longmire. Th this is an example. You, of seen Longmire. The you need to see Longmire. Well, we are halfway in. We just got past a major <gasps> are section. You? Oh, yes. We, ju we just got past a major segment of story and now uh -huh. I now I think the story's getting ready to rest restart into something else. So we just got to a major finish, a major portion okay. early Did on. Did someone die on a chair? Someone stopped participating in the show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Were they sitting on a chair when they stopped participating in the show? I think they still had the drink in their hand. <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay, how about a couple episodes before that when he did the horrible thing. Yeah. I'd... How about that? People are like, just go ahead and spoil oh it. Oh, my God. No, no, I'm not going to spoil it for you. Man, the first Woo! like four or five episodes were just even better than what it used to be on a and &E. I think it was on A&E. Now it's on Netflix, and Netflix is doing really well. I, I really I really like Longmire. 
Um, I'm getting ready to start watching Chef's Table. I also listen to the Slash Film podcast, and they talk about a lot of different shows they watch and stuff. Yeah. And I'm all about cooking, so I'm, I'm going to start watching that one. All right. So uh, Miriam says, The Walking Dead rules. The reason I think Nick is out first is because of his Twitter. Only follows two people and doesn't speak of Survivor. Hmm. Who is that? Who did she say? Nick is the life coach. Nick. Nick. Oh, yeah. I don't. Yeah, Nick. Woo. Now, something. Uh, Darnell is calling people out. So is Peter. And it's interesting to see who follows who. All follow Anna. Neil and Peter and Darnell. And also Joe messaged me. Well, be careful of Joe. He's in, you know. A could be an older man. Could be investigating you too. So yeah. But um, I, what something Emily said about Darnell about him having all the, the the stuff to make to the end. It's true. And if he comes across as a likable, sociable person, he could be fifth or fourth because they're not going to take him to the end. They're not going to yeah. take it a guy that you know could use the money if he gives that story. But so I, I don't think I wouldn't take him to the end because he he'd get a bunch of votes just for that reason. So what else are you watching? Anything else you're watching? Uh, Keeping no. up with Downton Abbey. Oh yeah. Are you watching it this season? Yes. Oh, it's so good. I've watched every season. But this Sunday kidding? night, I won't be watching it. Why? Sunday night, I'm watching the Super Bowl. Oh, it'll be over by halftime. So. It doesn't matter. I'm still watching it. And, I and okay, I can't decide which team. I, really, I don't, I don't know who I want to win. Because I would love to see Denver win because I'd like to see Peyton win. All right? Mm-hmm. But I also like Cam Newton, mm-hmm. so I wouldn't mind seeing him win. But I think if I had to weigh it out, I think I'd rather see Peyton win because Cam's going to win later on. So I'd like to see Peyton win. This is why we're best friends, because I could just say ditto. Because I'm okay. I'm a Peyton Manning fan, and I want him to win. Because I think if he wins, he'll say I'm done. If he wins, he'll he'll say that's it. I'm going out on right. top, and I'm done. But I like Cam. Of course, I'm close to Carolina, so I like Carolina. I like how dominant they are, and they're so strong. And I do think if I had to pick somebody, I'd pick Carolina to win, but I'm probably yeah. going to end up pulling for Peyton and Denver. Yeah. Well, you know, Cam is so humble. Yeah, you'd never know he was winning. Yeah, sarcasm. sarcasm. But I agree. I think Cam's got several opportunities to win down the road, oh, whereas yeah. Peyton, this might Absolutely. be his last shot. Absolutely. Um, Miriam, let's see. This is funny. I don't. I don't, uh, I don't think Joe's a medevac. I think Caleb is the medevac. Nick is the R H A P fan. Yeah, I think Nick used to write for for Rob has a podcast. Uh, but isn't everybody an R H A P fan? I thought everybody was. Sure. Yeah. Uh, he may know my brother, a major in the army. Okay. Oh, me? No. Uh, I was not. I was not in Okinawa because of the Marines. I was in Okinawa because my dad was in the Air Force. So, but anyway, uh, so yeah, I want to see a good Super Bowl game, and then I will watch Downton Abbey after that, and watch get because of anyway. <laughs> I don't think it liked your herbs because it broke up. So I couldn't tell what you're saying. Oh, right. okay, all right. I'll be cooking all pregame, right, so I don't have I don't have to listen to any pregame. I'll be cooking for the youth at church. Yes. So, yes. all right. Uh, let's see. Well, and by the way, I meant like all survivors are Rob fans because heck, man, you want to be a Rob fan? He's got what fifteen thousand Twitter followers or something. Mm-hmm. So he's got a huge audience. So you'd be foolish not to be a Rob fan. His staff right. has ten times ten yes. times the people following them as <laughs> Yes. Yeah, he has more staff. Yes. Me. Yes. <laughs> oh, I love Rob. He's a great guy. All right. So uh, don't forget to shop Amazon. STWDD.com slash Amazon. All right. Whether you watch or listen, thank you for tuning in, sharing our show with others. We didn't have any iTunes reviews this week. So uh, get on iTunes, subscribe, leave us a review, not just a star, not just five stars, but go ahead and write something nice and we'll say your name and we'll talk about it. And uh, it'll also help us get moved up in uh, survivor searches for podcasts and everything. So uh, you also help us finance the D&D shows when you when you do become a D&D patron. That's awesome. And uh, you get a few little patron perks, and the big one's coming up in April. So, all right, that's all I got. How about you, David? I'm good. I'm ready. Let's get the season started. I know. I don't want to get off the air. We're only like 48 minutes in, 49 minutes. This is weird. 
Yeah, but used I, to be in this I, short. I'm like you. I don't want to give anything else away because I don't. We got a draft next week, and I, I know. <laughs> want to make I, sure. And I haven't even talked to Dan about this yet. You Let might me guess. Well you and he's Kelly just, and Colton. Gonna... You and Kelly and Colton have already had Skype calls, and y'all already know your draft order and everything, don't you? Would it make you upset if I said yes? No, it wouldn't. Well, no, we haven't. I oh, I okay. decided to leave Colton alone. I started that group. I said, "Here's our group," but I'm not. I'm not going to bother you anymore until after tonight, and then we got to start talking. Yeah. Okay. Well, I will contact Dan this week, and we will get our draft order ready. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. You have a great night, and we'll talk to you later. See you.